All right, so let's get to uniforms. We are uh, the, the weirdest uh, Twilight uniform pairings, and we've got honorable mentions here. Uh, but I'll let you start because I started with Bill Walton at the top of the show. Okay, naturally we'll do our top seven because that's yeah seven is a good that's number. What folks yeah, do. yeah, yeah. At seven, I have seven is a touchdown. That's how many points a touchdown and extra point count yeah, for. Yeah, with extra fo- point. football pod. Yeah, Brett Favre. Is my number seven. You can see him here in the New York Jets green and the uh, Minnesota Vikings purple, not to be confused with the Green Bay Packers green and yellow, which he wore for a long time. Um, this was V jarring. The um, what I need for something to make this list is a player who is synonymous with a franchise, one franchise, and then you have the late career move where you're saying golly day it would have been a whole lot cooler in my opinion if you had stayed with the same franchise the entire time and i know players and franchises get to impasses um some get cut and it's out of their control but Favre was a shocker shocked the system it did it was a real shocker number six carl no, wait, can i talk can i talk can i say something yeah I didn't think this was that weird, and I did see your selections beforehand. I didn't think it was that weird because he was he performed well in both places, especially Minnesota. So it like took some of the edge off. It was less of a sad story. It was like he went to New York. Hey, listen, I remember we went to play the Jets, and they told me, hey, if you sack Brett Favre, you're the first father-son combo to sack the same player. Wow. We lost 40 to nothing, so there weren't <laughs> a lot of drop back passes there. Um, and I was young in my career. They they still were pretty good with him there. Um, they were great with him in Minnesota. Save for a bad decision in the NFC Championship, they're probably going to the Super Bowl. Yep. Six, Carl Malone uh, in that flashy L.A. Laker yellow. The mailman belongs in Utah with John Stockton for the rest of time. That was a hilarious team. Yeah, who else was on that team? Gary Payton. Yep. And then, uh, and then they ran it back with the zombie team with Steve Nash and Dwight Howard at a later time, not to be confused with this iteration yeah, of the dude, Lakers and Dwight Howard. Just, uh, but Carl Malone, man, um, I'm going to be saying the same thing over and over, synonymous with one franchise. Also very synonymous culturally with the Utah region. Like just cowboy hats. Just really leaned into that thing I'm full Carl, out. Carl Malone. And he's from Louisiana. Yep. So he went from the bayou to the uh, high desert and the, the mountains, and he just thrived, you know, beating people up, threatening to beat people up, and then, shooting guns. And then over to La La Land. And then to L.A. where he, that's not as, that's more frowned upon. Mm-mm. Number five, Joe Montagna. I remember this well. And did you see what I've done here? I've put him next to that Steve Young. That was slick, Young. Yeah, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube.com. Uh, next to Steve Young in the Niners Uni. Uh, Montana, I have this memory of his thinking about or opting not to or not being able to get. I can't imagine he wasn't able to get, but not wearing the number 16 in Kansas City, Mm. sort of leaving it behind in San Francisco. Uh, Everything about that is weird. And Do you remember how they fared those two years, though? It's a rhetorical question. They were in the playoffs both years. AFC Championship one of the years. Mm. So for me, like... For you, if, if you do well, it's okay, huh? If you do well, it, it, it softens the blow to me. And then also, like, the Chiefs were kind of an iconic franchise. The color scheme's not too far off, so it's a red team. Uh, had he been playing in Miami for the Dolphins in obscurity, uh, I'd, I'd be even more weirded out. But I also remember playing with him in the video game in Madden in like 93 or 94, like that was kind of an interesting, like, oh, I can play with Joe Montana. This wasn't, you couldn't just create your own teams back in the day. Number four, Patrick Ewing. Seen here with the Seattle Supersonics. You know it's big going against the Knicks. You know it's a big deal when today in 2020, I pull this up and I still say, wow. Yeah, dude. You were like, was he on that NBA Finals team in 96 or 98 or whatever it was? Nah. nah. This was a forgettable 2000, 2001. Yeah. One year in Seattle followed by one year in Orlando after being with the Knicks from 85 to 2000. 
really odd. And you just tell how much people love the game to leave after 15 years with one franchise to go prove something. And I guess the checks are good too, though. Yeah. 13 a game for Seattle and 15.6 for Orlando. When yeah, he, he was, retired. He was still balling. Uh, game started for Orlando four. Another big man to talk about, and I don't think he's on your list here. No, he's not. Uh, Hakeem in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Or Charles Oakley in Toronto for that for that matter. Yeah, Hakeem in Toronto is worthy of this list. Just for sure. Didn't even remember it, to be honest. You know what those uniforms remind me of? Those Sonics uniforms remind me of? And I, I like the Detlef Shrimps the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also like those um, because back in the day, I used to like the Sonics because Frank Bukowski was on there. Right. A uh, buddy of my dad's guy I grew up hanging out with, um, still a good friend to this day. Got ejected from the game, got into it with Rodman in the finals. The guy with the military cut, um, awesome dude, was a really good player for a long time and bounced around. But I used to watch those games, and that was the year when on Gatorade bottles they had the caps. Do you remember the caps? Yeah. And you, everybody wanted to get bowls and six. Yeah. I remember that well because our good friend Ali Swanson stole my cap. Yeah, you maintain that to this day. Yeah, he stole my cap yeah. at batting practice. He says he doesn't remember. Yeah, he had bowls and six. And what you did, if you want, if you got bowls and six, um, or any competitive team, but you knew it was probably going to be the bowls, you got like a Gatorade towel in the mail. <laughs> so that was a big deal. Yeah, it's like... Um when we were all beginning to realize how serious coronavirus was yeah. a couple of weeks ago and they had literal uh, families with their babies crawling on the floor of the ACC tournament mm-hmm. um, in a baby race mm-hmm. to win a backpack. Yeah, you know what? That's yeah. a little bit more misguided than than mm-hmm. collecting Gatorade caps, but yeah. the juice is not worth the squeeze. Correct, nice. Um, okay, so you're at number three. My number three is Junior Griffey. And I'm glad I got that out last time I tried to say that on this pod. I said Junior Gurphy. Uh-huh. And uh, I just thought that the Seattle Mariner, King Griffey Jr., number 24, was awesome. The tops, amazing. And then he goes to Cincy, uh, where he wore the number three. He also wore the number 30. He later goes to the White Sox. It was just very off putting for me. Have you heard him in the booth? No, I don't think so. It's interesting. It's interesting to hear his voice. He's one of those guys who played in an era where you didn't hear guys' voices. And then, like, by the way, he's aged terrifically. Um, but the White Sox, I was going to ask you if you, you'd, you remember him in the White Sox. I think a lot of people remember the Reds. Some people might not remember him at Comiskey. Yeah, and what I tried to do here was the first jersey gotcha. after the one we remember. Okay. My number two is Michael Jordan. Seen here on YouTube playing against the Chicago Bulls. I did it again. Yeah. Um, what can you say? I, I wasn't a Bulls fan. I wasn't, um, I was an MJ fan, I guess. Uh, but no matter, you just, you want him to stay in the same place. And he didn't. Yeah, you know what, for me, I think that the Jordan with the Wizards thing was, has been so inflammatory for people our age that, the the sting wore off. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. But it's hard to not when he, when you're the goat. Yeah, kind of like perhaps what Mr. Brady's facing. Here. I think it's a little bit different. I think Brady's going to be more competitive than Mike was in in Washington, and the team might be as well. Why'd Tom title the tweet "Forever a Patriot"? As I grab question, I grab my mobile and read. It, I was like, oh, of course. It's a good question because now you can get down there, and Bruce Arians is going to be like, "What team do you play for?" In front of the locker room, he's going to be like, "Yeah." I mean, I'm currently on the Bucks, but I'm forever a Patriot. Yeah. Not going to play so well in the locker room. That might have been the lead. By the way, shout out to Pats fans. I got my Patriots pants on. Oh, cool. Yeah. It looks like a sweat pant. Yeah. Uh huh. I got those when I played for the Patriots. Nice. Um, number one for you Hall of Famer who played for the Cowboys for a long time. This shocked my system to the core. You don't remember this? Emmett Smith. What do you mean I don't remember this? This is Emmett Smith in the bright red Arizona Cardinals. Very bright. For which he uh, played two years. The picture, if you're on YouTube.com, looks like a commercial, like an ad. And he just like knows he's, he's wearing the wrong uniform. He knows. He knows. He knows he's done something wrong. Get that check. Uh, Emmett. 
Cowboy from 90 through 2002 and then gets a couple checks with the Cardinals. Post Y2K was playing football. Super weird. Playing football in the desert. Probably running a 4.8 at that point. Yeah. When we were in college, he was Insane. playing for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's so that's your list. list. That's a good list. Applause. Thank you. Okay. My number seven. This is uh, not one that looks that weird because it's fairly recent. Uh, but I think that the nature of wearing two division rival uniforms uh, at the end of your career is super weird. It's Andre Johnson. Yeah. Uh, and that's him in Indy and Tennessee. I think it looks even weirder in Tennessee. Agreed, just because um, of the uni. Big target receiver in Tennessee. Um, you, you had, shout out to Kenny Britt, uh, who, who wore the powder blue as a big guy out on the edge. Also now you've got, uh, what's his name? I haven't been doing football in. Uh, Davis. Davis. Is that the, huh? What the fuck is the guy's name? Brown, yeah. Brown. Brown. That sounds right. What can Brown do for you? He can do a lot. Yeah. He can do a lot. Um, big targets. That one, not as iconic um, because he was at the end of his career. But two division rivals. So Houston Texans. Yeah. A good uni. I need to bring this up quickly. You think? Yes. DeAndre Hopkins. Low key, the Arizona Cardinals today have the worst uniforms in the league. Uh, higher than low key. Now, they don't have the worst. The well, worst now that Tampa pending Bay. Tampa. If they went back to the Pat Tillmans and threw DeAndre Hopkins in those. Fine. I even think they, with they the need Arizona's, to go somewhere else. But yeah, the, flag. That, the sun. Yep. Oh, yep. Swag. And uh, DeAndre Hopkins and with Kyler Murray... And Christian Kirk swag and Kenyon city. Drake is going to be, that's going to be too cool a team swag to city. have. They're not even going to let me in that city. There's so much swag. Right. Friend of the program, sat next to D-Hop, as I call him, at the, uh, the NA, NFL Honors. Cool. I call him Nuke. Yeah, Nuke, yeah. Um, number six, I've got uh, the Minister of Defense in Carolina. Mm. Reggie White in Carolina, the picture. I did your thing. He's tapping Brett Favre on the helmet. Old buddy. Yeah, I'm in Carolina, uh, finishing my career. Um, I don't know what made him do it. He still was playing pretty well. He had almost six sacks. He had five and a half sacks that year. Um, but he did it, and I was a big Panthers fan, as you remember growing up. Forgot about that until today. Um, yeah. Yeah, forgot about it. Number five. This is, uh, this is a weird one for me. This, this was one that I completely forgot about as well. It's Randall Cunningham. In a Dallas Cowboys uniform. V Strange on my list as well. V Strange, also those uniforms uh, not synonymous with greatness. Nor really with the Cowboys. They rarely wear them for, yeah. for good reason. Yep. They're like the early Tony Romos. Well, and they try to wear white every single yep. week. Yep. And a couple teams. But, I'm, you know, you play in Philly for 11 years and then you, you end up in Dallas. And I'm like, when was this? This is Randall Cunningham again playing football post Y2K. Make it make sense. And, and when he played for the Eagles, Philly, go back to those. Oh, go back joints. to those uniforms in a heartbeat. Number four is one that made me sad, partially because I know this guy's in bad shape physically. One of the best backs of all time, uh, Houston Oiler great, Earl Campbell, also played in New Orleans. And it does not look like Earl Campbell if you're watching uh, on YouTube.com. Nope. It looks like... Uh, you know, if Earl Campbell didn't have a Snickers. Right. He's in a cloud of New York Giants. Bad uniform. The Giants are just the you know, Giants are just giving him the 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 business right now in this picture. And he's wearing black pants, white top, uh, not a great uniform, especially uh back when he was playing. And I don't think the Saints were very good there. And that's what makes that so sad is you've got a guy who didn't play in Houston. I mean, this is a guy who's reduced to like a wheelchair now. I think he took such a beating uh, in Houston and playing running back back in that era. The shelf life wasn't long. He wasn't in Houston as long as you think. Five, six years, finished his career in a Saints uniform. Super weird. Also want to enter into the conversation here, running backs uh, ending up somewhere else. E. Dick, Eric Dickerson in Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah. Running high as a mug. If you look at those pictures, E. Dick is like six foot five running. 
uh, because he's, it's, he's older. That AstroTurf hurts. He played his whole career in sunny California. He also played somewhere else as well. I'm forgetting. It's escaping me. But Atlanta was the bitter end. Edick was a Ram, a Colt. Colt. A Raider. A Raider was the weird one. And a Falcon. Um, okay, so my number four was Earl Campbell. My number three is going to be Gordy Howe. Nice. With the Whalers looking like he missed the cut for a Cialis commercial. <laughs> like, he's 52 in this picture, which is ridiculous that you're playing a sport like that. Again, not a contact sport, a collision sport. And I'm pretty sure they weren't wearing helmets back then. This just looks ridiculous. Why are you out there? What are you doing? I know you love the puck, but um, you're 52 and you're playing for the Whalers. You see that there's an H in that negative space with the uh, with the whale mm-hmm. tail. Mm-hmm. It's one the of the w- best logos. HW, beautiful. I love the Whalers uh, get-ups, which are no longer in existence. Number two, this is one that blew my mind. Franco Harris, do you remember where he played? Pittsburgh. Seattle is where he finished his career. Frank, <laughs> Franco Harris. With some evergreens there in the background. Yeah, just hanging out probably by the facility. It looks beautiful right there by the Puget Sound. Nice. And those uniforms, those Steve Largents are magnificent. But, um, you know, he played, okay, Franco Harris in a Seahawks uniform. It definitely looks like a Halloween costume. It's definitely out of this world. 1984, he was released after a contract dispute. He needed 300 or so yards to become the leading NFL rusher at the time. Ended up with 170 and was cut in eight games. By the way, Franco Harris, one of the nicest dudes I've met that were Hall of Famers. Super cool. So you can check that one off. Yeah, 12,120 career yards, 170 that year in Seattle. Such a nice dude. It's a good call by you. Uh, Terrible, uh, not a terrible uniform. It's a great uniform, but it just, I never knew what happened. Uh, Number one, it's going to throw you for a loop here. This is somebody who was in the ring, so to speak. Okay. Kane. Changing uniforms. That's quite the chain. And running for mayor of like Knox County or something like Knox Knoxville. Uh, I don't know if you can be a mayor of a county. You can. Yeah. Um, He is mayor of Knox County. Yep. Knox County, you know, smiling with a microphone in his hand, going from looking like Hannibal Lecter wearing what it's either pizza or somebody's flesh on his face. Um, Just this big smelly looking demon to a guy in a suit that looks like you'd love to have a beer with him and talk about policy. Seven foot, 323, Glenn Thomas Jacobs, a.k.a. Kane. A.k.a. Born in Spain. Was he? Yeah. I knew he was worldly and cultured. Honorable mentions here, you got Bruce Smith in Washington, who you brought up, Hakeem in Toronto, and that came up. Robert Parrish, you brought up in Chicago. What about Robert Parrish in Charlotte? Yeah. Both very strange. The chief, the chief is a Celtic. Yeah. You know why they call him the chief? Why? <laughs> is that right? That's the rumor. Ray Bork, you brought that one up. The Avs. Jerry he Rice in there. Seattle. Yeah. Those, and those unis were just awful. Abhorrent. He really, he did that uh, Northwest. Tour. Tour. Did yeah. the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Did the Seahawks. Enter his illustrious career. Lastly, um, Tony Parker and Charlotte. Not even good uniforms. You play your whole career somewhere as iconic as San Antonio. You end up in Charlotte to finish it out in those weird, like Jordan Brand cartoon unis. Bring the bring the pinstripes back. Give me the Muggsy Bows. The Tony Bennett's. Give me the grandma. The grandma Ma's. Yeah. Yeah, and then I also mentioned uh, Joe Namath, which makes who makes all these lists, but I didn't really, you know. Yeah, yeah. You think he's a Jet and the Ram Uni looks weird? It looks weird. His face mask looks really weird if you look it up. Wasn't really around for it. And then Dominique Wilkins apparently had a stint with the Boston Celtics. Which is crazy. Ronnie Lott with the Jets, really weird looking. And at that point, the Jets' fits looked like uh, C-A-Y-F-L. That's Charlottesville Area Youth Football League. Uh, I believe that's the acronym. 
Just pulled that out of my ass. I didn't uh, play in that particular um, league. Yeah, you probably didn't make weight the other way. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Shaq played on weird teams. Robin with Dallas. Uh, you got a bunch. We can go on for days. Wayne Gretzky, St. Louis Blues. And those blues. Uh, vibrant. Vibrant, those uniforms. Uh, the, the sweaters. Yeah. The jackets, as they call them. They blues call them the sweaters. Blues unis are awesome. Oh, no. In general. I'm sorry, no. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's for another day. The, there are some old blues, yeah. which have more of a Carolina blue to them. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. 